I this is Jay Horowitz, the latest edition of Amazing Conversation with my good friend Terry Collins, who's managed more games than anybody in Mets history. We used to be PR managed now with friend friend. I mean, I, I can't tell you I value your friendship. Anytime I ever needed it through the years, you're always there for me. Well, um, you know, Jay, when I got the job here in New York, the first guy I ever had a relationship was Jay Horowitz. Yeah. And I could have never made it in this town without your help. But eventually I got you fired. You though. got me fired, but, yeah. you know, it's okay. Yeah, I got, that's, I, and we know that's not true. I, I, yeah. I eventually yeah. got... Let me, yeah. I just want to throw a couple of, uh, you know, do some research. 2015 World Series, 16 playoff. The second half of both years, we were combined 30 games over 500. I mean, in the World Series year, let me start with the, the Wilma Flores press conference. We had, we had some great press conferences that night. When they, when they thought Wilma was <laughs> traded, and you said I would have known. I mean, I, you, you were aggravated that night, right? Well, yeah, because I, I mean, obviously during the game, uh, I was I heard some of the crowd noises, but then David Wright, who was uh, injured at the time, right. came in the dugout and said, "Terry, it's all over TV that Wilma Flores has been traded," yeah. and I said, "He has not been traded." He said, well, it's all over TV. They're announcing that he's right. been traded. And I said, David, this guy has not been traded. He said, well, they're saying he's traded. Yeah. I said, well, you see that phone that's right there behind me? That phone goes to Sandy Alderson. Yeah. And if Wilmer Flores was traded, that phone would be ringing because right. I'd have to take him out of the game. Wilmer was, at that particular time, was going on the deck circle, and people were saying goodbye to him. Yeah, and, hey, thanks that. for everything. Yeah. Good to see you. Know, good luck. And, and he's all shook up. And so he goes to the field, and at the he's end of the crying. game, well, yeah, he's had tears in. So then when he came back off the field, I went to him and I said, "Wilmer, you got to, you got to calm down." I, I said, "Listen, I have not heard one word about you being traded, and if I did, I'd take you out of the lineup. But so you've got to get a hold. I need you, and I need you to finish this game. So you know, just go out and play and play." And he said, "Okay." And so sure enough, he went back out the next inning, and the people were, you know, cheering him, cheering him. And now the phone rings. And it's Sandy, See. and he said, you got to take him out of the lineup. <laughs> he said, I said, has he been trading? He goes, no, but he's crying on the field. <laughs> he said. <laughs> so <laughs> I took him out, yeah. and, and then when the game was over, we were, you know, we, we, we walked up towards the clubhouse. Sandy was there with Jeff to say, hey, look, that, that, you know, the deal didn't happen. So uh, it was crazy. So the next day, was that the San Diego game? We blew the 7-1 lead. It was right after that, right? Closely no, no, it was before. That. that was probably the low play that year. Seven to one game. We in a rain blew. game. It rained. We one pitch and we give up. We lose eight to seven. So then we go fast forward to the day after June first. That game, we sweep the set Washington three games. Right. Then Wilmer wins the game in the twelfth inning. I've never seen it. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, it was like the, like two days later. Yeah. You know, he did didn't play. And then I pinch hit him, and he hits a home run to win the game in the 12th inning. Right. You can't, you couldn't put a Hollywood, Hollywood script. And he got, he got that. a big hit the next day, I think. He too, did, right? he did, yeah. yeah. And he just, and you know, from that point on, you know. And again, Jay, Jay, for me, it speaks to the passion of our fan base here. Um, they're tough at times, but when they saw a guy like Wilmer Flores who wanted to stay, who wanted to be a Met, yeah. who was upset about leaving, they embraced him. And, and, and you know he it's and so he's become a folk hero here, oh, and, and, yeah. and it should be. Yeah, I, I think I think it would cry in my job more maybe. <laughs> so the happiest I've ever seen you in a play. We sweep the Cubs. You have to be in the Dodgers. You were spritzing the fans with with with, with wine. Right. Not, with, That's what with, got me fired. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was that one of your happier moments? You were you were. You were Right by the dugout, you there spraying the fans with champagne. Well, Jay, it, it was, and one of the main reasons we, we the night we clinched the National League pennant by beating the Cubs was would have been my mother and father's forty seventh wedding right, anniversary. Right, I remember that. And so um, they had both passed away, and so during the game, as the game was going on, I thought about them, and so. And how happy they would have been. I mean, I was, I was a baseball lifer. Um, you know, I, I've told the story when I was in the fifth or sixth grade. Back then, the World Series were in the daytime, and the Yankees were playing. I do not remember who, um, but my mother kept me home from school so I could watch the World Series. Right. Wrote a note that 
I had a doctor's appointment or something and, and kept me home from school so I could watch the World Series. So, yeah, so to finally get to the World Series after all of my years, all of my years in the minor leagues, all the winter balls, all of the, you know, bus rides and everything else, yeah, it's probably the crowning moment of any and, baseball. And as you tell me, we went to the line, the first game to World Series at Kansas City was a touching moment. Very, for very touching. You know, and again, as you're standing out there and, you know, you're, you're looking down the row and there's the greatest, some of the, obviously the greatest players in the game, and you're thinking, was all worth it. Yeah. All, the, all the time, all the effort uh, was all worth it just being able to be the there. The first pitch didn't go that well for us. <laughs> I'm sitting at my scorebook. This guy's going to decide to park home run at the first pitch. I said, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I, I've, I've, I watched the video many times. And, um, you know, we had young Michael Conforto, who's a rookie in left field. Yeah. And I think, you know, obviously, Ioannis Cespedes was in center at the time. And, and we all thought Ioannis was going to catch it. But I think, you know, if, if Michael, you know, I, I, maybe Yo might have called him early or yeah. something. Because Michael, I really had a pretty yeah. good line on it. And, and, you know, he, he came up here with a reputation of not being a real good defender, but he turned out to be a right. very, very yeah, good did. defender. So he, I, I think if, if we could relive that, uh, he might have had a chance to catch that ball. Tough series. We lose, we lose in five games, two games in extra innings. You know, we win the first game. You know, you know one, one thing through the years, you've never backed off what you did with Harvey in that game. And, I, you know, people didn't know what he went through to pitch that year. You know, he wants the ball. It didn't work out with 2 nothing lead. But you never second-guessed yourself going forward, you know, I mean. Well, I don't know if you can, Jay. I, I, again, I, 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 do, I believe totally in accountability. You know, I made a decision. Um, and, yeah, there was a lot that led up to it. Obviously, Matt coming back from injury, uh, back being healthy. We had a, a tough time during the summer because we had innings limits on all those young guys. Right. You know, and even Jake, when Jake was – like 200 or something, and, and I think Harv was 185, and Noah's was something in that number. So in order to try to keep those guys from ex exceeding those innings limits, uh, it was a tough time for me because I, I thought well, maybe we should go to a six-man rotation. Well, you, you know, that's easy to say, but that means that you're not running your best guys out there as much as you'd like right, to. So right. uh, then we, we had a situation where, you know, it was brought up that Matt was only going to throw 180 innings. And I pitch him, and this is where I, get, I tip my hat to him because I pitched him one night against the Yankees here at City Field, and he pitched really well. Pitched five innings. I think he, I don't know if he gave up any runs. Might have hit two or three hits. Right. And I took him out because, again, the innings limits were, were right. going to catch up. And so I took him out of the game. And the next day he walked to my office, and he said, I want to pitch. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, I want the ball. Just okay. give me the ball. I want to pitch. And I saluted him. And that, to me, was the competitor that, that, of the Matt Harvey that I knew. Yeah. The guy who just give me the baseball. I want it. And then in game five, and he said, I want this game. I said, you've earned it. And yeah, you deserve no it. Yeah, question he's earned it. Another tough night, June 1st, 2012. Uh, Johan's no hitter. You didn't really enjoy that much, did you? I did not enjoy that too much, no. Uh, that was a, a, a tough one. I, and I've said it, Jay, you know, he... He was such an, a valuable piece of the, of, of the franchise and obviously had a huge contract. Come, another one coming off injury, shoulder problems. Right. He's sailing along in this game, and he's, he's got this no-hitter going. We get to the, the sixth, and sixth inning, and, and my pitching coach said, hey, how much are you going to let him go? And I said, I don't know, because I, you know, I, I, I knew he was going to reach that 100-pitch mark, and that's kind of the no-man's land. And, and sure enough, he gets to the seventh inning, and he's got over 100 pitches, and I walked down to him and, and said, how you doing? And he looked me in the eye and he said, I'm fine. I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And the next inning I walked down and before I could say anything, he said, I'm fine. And, and I told him, I said, well, you're my hero and walked away. I remember walking to the, uh, to the press conference room. That was, uh, it was a difficult night, you know. In, in, well, 137 pitches, a lot of pitches. And, um, but there was a time during that game where I felt who he was, what he stood for, uh, the kind of leader he was on that team, he deserved that opportunity to pitch that no-hitter. But Bartolo closed home run in San Diego. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. No, but who saw that coming, right? Who saw it coming? You know, he hated hitting. As a matter of fact, we had, being a National League team, we always had you know, pitchers batting practice every day. And, and there was a lot of days Bartolo didn't want to hit. Right. So he didn't like hitting. And so 
Uh, but I will tell you, Pat Russell, who was our assistant, it was the assistant hitting coach at the time, we were talking one day, and in this meeting, coach's meeting, he said, because Pat's job was to run the pitcher's batting practices, right. he said in this meeting, he said, someday this guy's going to ambush somebody. He's that strong, that big and strong. Somebody's he's going to get a fastball that he can handle, and he's going to hit one, and he did. You know, if you're around, I, we might we got, got, have to get you here September 17th this year. He's going to officially retire, and he wants to do it at City Field. Oh wow! Uh, and he he wants he's finally not going to pitch, and you know he wants to. We have a little ceremony here. We have a T-shirt, you know, big sexy on uh -huh. it. So and I mean, oh, I got to get one of those. No, I mean. I mean, how is he to manage Terry? The best. You know, Jay, there are, there are guys who obviously, Bartolo Colon, before he in, got hurt, you know, this guy was the consummate power pitcher in the game. He, he, when he was in Cleveland, he pitched a game. I was managing the Angels. We played Cleveland, and they had a good team. They had a very good team, and I did too. He pitched a nine-inning complete game against us in Anaheim. He threw 128 pitches, and the 128th pitch was 98 miles an hour. Wow. So it just, you know, and this guy was really special. Then he reinvented himself after he was injured and became this command, you know, tremendous control with one pitch. Sinker inside, sinker outside, sinker up, sinker down, and, and just mastered his craft. But he was the consummate pro, and I have told this story so many times. We were going through a rough time. We, I had really burnt the bullpen up pretty good, and we were out in Anaheim playing, and... Bartolo knew it, and he's, they're knocking him around pretty good. You were there. You yes, were, no, they were knocking him around pretty good. And he came to me in the third inning, and he said, I'll get us through six. Just leave me alone. Don't, yeah. He said, don't, don't get anybody else up. And, and he did. And how he about his, his fielding plays behind the back tosses and underhand tosses? That's the people don't give this yeah. guy any credit. He, he's athletic. I mean, he held runners. He had great feet yeah. for a big man. He had tremendous feet, had good, really good hands. But... Uh, so I had a coach who used to run our, our spring training whenever we were on the road. His name was Guy Conte. And Guy, went, he would every day would do the pitcher's fielding practice. And at the end of it, he'd say, okay, it's uh, Sports Center highlight time. And Bartolo Colon actually practiced that play in yeah, spring training. It's amazing. Amazing. He amazing. was a good athlete. Great. Another one of your former players trying to make history, Terry. Dan New Murphy's trying to become the first player to go from an old-timers day game back to the major leagues. Currently in the Angels farm system now. Murph told me he worked the wood. He's reinvented his swing. Well, that's a pretty good swing. I don't know if I had to reinvent. He probably yeah. just had to go find it again after yeah. being off for a few years. But, you know, Daniel Murphy, as you know, loves to hit. And I'm sure he gives a ton of hitting clinics or uh, instructions to different people. He loves to talk hitting. He, he's had, always had a great swing. And I will tell you, you know, because he, he, he gets himself in pretty good shape still. And if anybody can do it, I'm going to give him. I mean, he's I'll not doing it for the money. I mean, oh, heavens like, no. No, he just he's loves like, to play. He loves to play. And I, and I, th I thought I read someplace that his family wanted him to come back and play. Yeah. You know, I, he's got little kids now yeah. who really probably like to see dad play when they were really too small. They really didn't get a chance to see him when he was a, a real, real good player here. So um, I think it's great. I hope, he, I hope he gets back. Another one of your favorite guys, he came back for the one game trying to, to see his kid was David Wright. You have said he's one of your favorite guys to manage. Maybe my most favorite player. Why is that, Terry? Well, his respect for the game, Jay, is off the charts. His respect for people, the people in the game, other players, uh, coaches, front office people, fans, media. I mean, his whole uh, approach to the professional game, he learned, and I know he had some great people around him when he first got to the major leagues as a rookie, but he, but he took it and he, and he used it. And, and he taught the younger players how to be professional. And, I, and, I, and you know, when I asked him to be the captain that one spring, he said, no, I don't want to be the captain. Uh, and so about a, two weeks later, I called him back in. We talked about it again. And that's when he said, well, I'll think about it, but can I talk to the guys? I said, absolutely, do whatever you want. And I said, listen, this is not about trying to give speeches, standing up in the clubhouse and give speeches. This is being a professional, how you prepare, how you get yourself ready, how you play the game, how you are after the game. I said, that's what I want. That's what I, I think the captain should be. And he did. He went to all the guys, and they said, by all means. And, and, and he was truly, I mean, tr did a tremendous job. Because I know. When he, Jay, when, he used to, when I would be in the clubhouse and David would walk in, 
Everybody that was in there looked up. You know who he helped me with a lot was DeGrom. You know, Jacob didn't like uh, the by play a lot with the media, but he used to sit next to David, and, and he, he, Jacob saw that David kind of knew I was okay, and when they, after David left, he followed suit, you know, and that's what he, he did. I mean, he, he would have the, you know, by osmosis, he would let Trump. He went from, you know, like Franco to David, you know, and, and right. he picked it up. You know, 2012, we didn't win the pennant that year. We had Santana and the other guy, R.A. Dickey, 20 and 6, Cy Young, led the league in strikeouts. How was he to manage? Well, I was the field coordinator when I first came here, and R.A. was the last, I think, the last guy cut by the Mets that spring. Right. And we had a rule in the minor leagues that you had to shave. And of course, R.A. had a beard. And right. So the next, he came in, I said, you know, you're going to have to shave. He said, well, my children have never seen me without a beard, and I don't know if they'll know who I am. <laughs> and I said, well, that, that is the rule. And the next day he came in, and to tell you how he was as a person, he decided to have a party the night before. The night before he showed up in the minor league, he was going to have a party, and his kids shaved him. Really? Yes. They each had a chance. They, they shaved the, his beard. He wanted them to be a part of it, and that's the guy he was. Yeah. And, and I will tell you, that summer... I have never seen anything like the job he did. You know, Jay, not only, I mean, there were nights, well, there was the game in, in Tampa Bay. I mean, they didn't hit one ball right. hard, not one. And it, if it wouldn't have been that really a tough play, a bouncing ball on the third baseline, yeah. that's a no-hitter. You know, and then, but he handled the bat, he held the runners. And, you know, at the end of the year, I wanted him to get 20 wins. And it's really bad because I thought he had a shot at the Cy Young. And I asked him, I said, will you pitch on three days rest? And he said, yes, I will. Then he, did you, he, he, he climbs Mount Kilimanjaro, <laughs> publishes his own book, and goes on 60 minutes that year. Now, that was, that was, it was, it was yeah, amazing. Yeah. Just a tremendous year for him. And he was one of those guys you rooted for, especially after you read, if you read the book, you had to root for him. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and it's pretty funny. You know, he got drafted number one, and then they, they wouldn't pay him because he didn't have an older collateral ligament in his elbow, the one that everybody has to get Tommy yeah. John on. You would think he'd give him more money because he's not going to he's not going to tear that muscle. You know, so you managed for, for oh, 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 11 to 17, right? Mm -hmm. After you left, the one night you probably became more popular than you ever were when we won the World <laughs> Series. You know what I'm talking about? You called me the one night, and they had the, the video. That was when uh, Noah kind of missed Utley or didn't hit him in the right way. Right. And missed him, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that video, and I saw Tom Hagen the day before he retired, and he came over to me, remember the video. And, I mean, that, that, I mean, that's what it did you to the Met fans because you wore your heart on your sleeve. Well, that. I did, I did. And sometimes it, you know, it came back to burn me a little bit, but. You know, that night it was that night with that when that video came out, it was everybody said, Well, Jesus showed you how much you wanted to you protected your players. Well, I would do it anyway. Right. But um, my, my issue with the video is that, you know, certainly I would have been a lot happier if Noah would have hit the guy. Yeah. But I mean, he didn't. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it, it created a huge fear for her. It still is today. I still get. Uh, text from people with this video said, geez, I met you last week for the first time and I just saw this video yeah. and I just, and so I still see it today. Um, and, you know, my, I, I can't do anything about what happened except uh, I wish it wouldn't have got leaked out. Yeah, that's the problem. And the Empire didn't know. It didn't happen too that when Sean Estes, he tried to hit Clemens a year after the world and he missed, he missed Clemens and, and anyway, I just hit a home run in that game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. so, Mention what I know. Since you left Cole, you become a TV celebrity well, on S and White. I mean, do you like the TV part of it, Terry? It's fun. Yeah, it's a different angle. I mean, I, I, they're they're very fun to work with. Um, good people, topics. You know, I, I, sometimes I wish there was a little longer period of time where you could discuss discuss an right. issue. You know, um, but it isn't. It's, yeah, it's a lot of fun, and I, you know, I don't do a lot of. I do a lot just from a lot of times just Zoom from home. But it's fun to come up here in the studio and meet and be around the guys and and, and talk baseball. That's I mean, f after 52 years, that's kind of what I do. So yeah, last a little where you had the late night games in San Diego, right? That's a tough thing. You know, how did you stay awake? How many coffees did you drink? I today? had a few coffees. Yeah. Uh, starting about that fifth inning when you're just sitting there watching your game, and all of a sudden, you know, I go to bed now. At, Nine or nine thirty, right. and so all of a sudden my eyes are starting to shut because that was when the game started, and 
and I, I had to get up and move around. I, I stood up a lot during those games, but uh, uh, I, I salute those guys because, and I, as I make a joke at, at the studios, I said, you know, if you watch the game and it's now 2 o'clock in the morning in the East, you're going to bed. Right. <laughs> yeah. There's nobody getting up to watch the post-game show sure. at 2 o'clock in the morning, I wouldn't think. But it is part of the gig. And, you know, the amazing thing, Jay, there was another show on live after we were done. Really? Yes. Sport oh, Night New York. Yeah, I, I missed that one, Terry. Yeah, I did too. I, I, I went to bed. <laughs> you know, as you were getting near 9-11, you, you, when you were with, the, the, uh, with Tampa Bay, you made an early visit to, to Ground Zero with some of your teammates there? Well, we did. We came in. We were the first team in New York to play the Yankees. I mean, if, obviously the Mets were the first team to play, but first American League game, we played New York, and we were, of course, lined up on the third baseline with a fireman and a policeman and a player. And I met so many people with such horrific stories of 9-11. Uh, and Wade Boggs was one of our coaches, along with Darren Dalton was one of our coaches in Tampa Bay. And Wade, uh, one of his buddies was a Detroit, or I mean, New York uh, detective. Right. And there's a big famous picture, I think, of Wade on his horse. I remember one that, of yeah. Ones. Anyway. Yeah. I think that was the guy. Anyway, Wade uh, said he this guy would like to take us uh, down to Ground Zero. So Darren and I went with him. Um, he was a lot braver than I was. I saw all I want cared to see from yeah I was a distance away. I didn't need to go any closer. But uh, yeah, we did, and certainly uh, let's just hope I never have to see another one. But you still maintain a relationship with a lot of police in New York. You didn't know, live in New York anymore. You're back and forth a lot. You made a lot of friends on the police department through the years. I do. I have a lot of a lot of friends with the NYPD. Uh, I, I still do some things with them. Yeah, I have some friends who are, you know, a lot of detective friends. Matter of fact, I they, the the de, uh, retired detectives group gave me an award one year. I remember and that beautiful award, just a spectacular award, and one of the most entertaining nights I've ever spent. And so, yeah, I I come back a lot. I love coming here. I love coming back and seeing my friends and. You know, I, even today, I, don't, I can't walk down the street without people stopping and, you know, talking about 2015, so. That was really remarkable. I mean, the, the, the trade deadline really, you know, Cespedes, Clippert, Clippert, Kelly Johnson, Juan Uribe. Remember Juan Uribe running through the locker room naked? It was a pleasant sight to see. But, <laughs> but I mean, it can't invigorate a team. That's what happened with us, right, that year? It's exactly what happened with us. I, I will tell you, and I will salute Fred, Jeff, Saul, and Sandy, because we weren't we were close. We didn't, you know, we were we were a couple of games out or something. So, and they said this team's got a chance, and they went out and they improved us. And by every name that you just mentioned, including Addison Reed, who was another right, one we got. Every time we got one of those guys, the attitude in that clubhouse changed. Guys were looking around saying, "Hey, you know, everybody thinks we can win this now." And you and here and then the one rebate walk in or Kelly Johnson would walk in and then make huge contributions. And then here then our guys were we all know today, the bullpen. We walk we get two big huge pieces of our bullpen to get us so we could get to uh, Jerry's Familia in the ninth inning. Huge difference makers. And then when we got UN Cespedes, that's when right. That's when it was let's go. He let's told me go. how to ride horses, Terry. The one who used to say, I got on a horse. You did? I got one time. I thought I was going to die. I'm going to fall. It's high up there. It's high up there. It's high yeah, up he's there. He's got some nice ones, too. Y yes, he did. Yeah, but we, yeah. he was we, kind of a unique guy. You know, he's nice a very point. unique guy. He's a, you, know, he, you know, he bought his own bat company. Yeah. He, he, I can't remember what it was, but he, you know, he had the bats, and he bought the company. Remember the barbecues he used to have on his ranch? On his on ranch. His ranch and, and, I mean, a very sociable guy, you know. Tough times, at, you know, once in a while. We, but I'll, t I'll tell you one thing. Tool for tool, there's not a better player yeah. in baseball. The last half of 15, I mean, he just really carried us through the World Series. It was crazy what he did, just yeah. crazy. I mean, Home and run. had fun doing it. I mean, yeah. guys loved him. And, you know, I, one night we, we had a game one night, and we lost late in the game. We had a tough game. And I walked in the locker room when the game was over, and we were playing pretty good. And so, you know how it is. It's real sullen. You're in there, too, all the time. And I said to him, Turn the music on, for heaven's sakes. You know, hey, look, we're, we're okay. It's one of these nights. And I walked, left the clubhouse, and walked to my office, and right behind me was Joanna Cespedes. And he said, do you really don't care if we have some music? I said, no. And then you remember, the next day, he bought two six-foot speakers 
Do you remember those? I remember. Put one I, in each corner of the clubhouse. It was so loud, I couldn't hardly walk in there anymore. <laughs> well, I was yelling. But that's what, that's what he did. He said, well, we're, we're going to have some fun here, and we, had, we did yeah, have some fun. Yeah, it was good. You're a great friend. I appreciate our friendship, and uh, pleasure being here. Anytime. Anytime. Thanks, you know that. Thanks, sir.